Hello and welcome friends to Book Review. The title of the book today is The Black Cat by none other than Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe was born as Edgar Poe on January 19, 1809 and he died on October 7, 1849. He was an American writer, poet, editor and a literary critic. Poe is best known for his poetry and short stories, particularly his tales of mystery and the macabre. He is widely regarded as the central figure of a romanticism, an intellectual and literary movement in the United States and of American literature as a whole. And he was one of the country's earliest practitioners of short story. He is also generally considered the inventor of detective fiction genre. He is further credited for contributing to the emerging genre of science fiction. Poe was the first well-known American writer to earn a living through writing alone, resulting in a financially difficult life and career. Friends, The Black Cat is one of Edgar's popular short story. It was first published in August 19, 1843 in an edition of the Saturday Evening Post. It is a study of psychology of guilt often paired in analysis with Poe's another short story title, The Telltale Heart, which is another very good story that I've read and I'll cover it some other time, where an unnamed narrator endeavors to convince the reader of the narrator's sanity while simultaneously describing a murder the narrator has committed. In both the stories, a murderer carefully conceals his crime and believes himself unassailable but eventually breaks down and reveals himself impelled by a nagging reminder of his guilt. The story is presented as a first-person narrative using an unreliable narrator, but in reality, he is a condemned man at the outset of the story. The narrator tells us that from an early age he has loved animals. He and his wife have many pets including a large beautiful black cat named Pluto as described by the narrator. This cat is especially fond of the narrator and vice versa. Their mutual friendship lasts for several years until the narrator becomes an alcoholic. One night after coming home completely intoxicated he believes the cat to be avoiding him when he tries to seize it. The panicked cat bites the narrator and in a fit of drunken rage, he seizes the animal, pulls a pen knife from his pocket and deliberately gouges out the cat's eyes. From that moment onwards, the cat flees in terror at his master's approach. At first, the narrator is remorseful and regrets his cruelty. He says, but this feeling soon gave to irritation. And then, as if to my final and irrevocable overthrow, the spirit of perverseness. Later, in another fit of drunken fury, the narrator takes the cat out in the garden one morning and ties a noose around its neck, hanging it from a tree where it dies. But that very night, his house mysteriously catches fire, forcing the narrator, his wife and their servant to flee the premises. The next day, the narrator returns to the ruins of his home, only to find imprinted on the single wall that survived the fire, the apparition of a gigantic cat with a rope around the animal's neck. At first, the image deeply disturbs the narrator, but gradually he determines a logical explanation for it. Someone outside had cut the cat from the tree and thrown its corpse into the bedroom to wake him up during the fire. The narrator begins to miss Pluto and hate himself for his actions, feeling guilty. Sometime later, he finds a similar cat in a tavern. It is the same size and color as the original and is even missing an eye. The only difference is a large white patch on the animal's chest. The narrator takes it home but soon begins to fear and hate the creature. Due to the fact that it amplifies his feeling of guilt, after a time a white patch of fur begins to take shape and much to the narrator's horror forms the shape of the gallows. This terrifies and angers him more and he avoids the cat whenever and wherever possible. Then one day when the narrator and his wife are visiting the cellar in their new home, the cat gets under his master's feet and nearly trips him down the stairs. His rage amplified by alcohol, the man grabs an axe and tries to kill the cat but is stopped by his wife. Being unable to take out his drunken fury on the cat, he angrily kills his wife with the axe instead. To conceal her body, he removes some bricks from a protrusion in the wall, places a body there and repairs the hole. A few weeks or a few days later, when the police show up at the house to investigate the wife's disappearance, they find nothing and the narrator goes uh, scot-free. The cat, which he intended to kill as well, has also gone missing. This grants him the freedom to 
sleep without the burden of murder. But on the last day of the investigation, the narrator accompanies the police into the cellar. They still find nothing significant. Then, completely confident of his own safety, the narrator comments on the sturdiness of the building and taps on the wall he had built around his wife's body when a loud, inhuman wailing sound fills the room. The police, alarmed, tear down the wall and find the wife's corpse. Sitting on the corpse, a rotting head to the utter horror of the narrator is the screeching black cat. The terrified narrator is immediately shattered completely by his reminder of his crime, which he had believed to be safe from discovery and the appearance of the cat. As he words it towards the end, I had walled the monster up within the tomb. So friends, that's the story. It's a very interesting story and very well written in case you like horror. I would give the short story 7 out of 10. Goodbye and see you soon.